you are always asking questions about what can you do with alerts on virtual machines or containers or cloud resources, right? So this is not mm, everything that you can do. I think the questions are typically more specific about what can I do in terms of automation and how much of it do I actually have to code up, right? right. So how much of it might be a script action versus something that it's a built-in action inside of alert. So let's walk through a really simple example and then we'll kind of extend it into a couple of other areas. So, the, so the first one is let's just do one that is a stupid simple alert for something that you would never do, which is, <laughs> mm, I don't know, automatically bounce a VM every time its memory hits a certain point. So imagine yes. that you know that there's a, a process in there with a leak, you are trying to get it fixed, it can't, and so rather than you logging in and doing it all the time, even though it's in production, you're just going to go ahead and set a threshold and let it just restart. bounce it all the time because, you know, what's a bouncing server among friends? Do not do this for real. But we'll just use we'll use this as an example. And also, don't yeah. use default out of the box alerts. Those are there for you to learn. And we've done lab episodes before to talk about that. We've done Thwack right. Camp sessions on that. So again, alerts like how do I hate thee? Mm -hmm. The point is these are the ones that ship out of the box are to learn how to use them to get something on and get some experience. Yeah. But spend some time on these because one, you can do a lot more with them, and two, you can cut down a lot on alerts that would otherwise go into a folder and will not be of use to you. Mm -hmm. So this first example of let's let's do one for a virtual right? So here we are inside the manage alert view, which you get to again through uh, settings, all settings. Um, or if you're looking at alert, there's a link there too, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm just going to say add new alert and we'll build one from scratch. And I know this is a lot of steps, but it actually is pretty straightforward, right? So the first one here is uh, do not try this at home. And do not try this at home. I, I always put in descriptions for views, uh, alert definitions, yes. any like the UNDP polar, it, because you will eventually come back and not remember what that was. Yeah, future you will thank you. That's all right. Um, so this is going to be, again, based on severity of the alert that I wanted to raise. And then I'm going to set the next thing is my trigger condition, right? So that's mm -hmm. the thing that's going to fire the alert. So the first thing, what am I going to set that alert on? Mm -hmm. So when you are talking about things like containers or VMs or UCS tunnels, uh, when you scroll down here, this is going to be based on the modules that you have. So for example, if I want to do this based on, oh, I don't know, a virtual machine, mm -hmm. it is now going to pull a different set of objects and, and conditions that I can apply. So the first one is, well, do I want to apply this to all of the objects in my environment? And no, I don't, because that would just be bad. So right. what I'm going to do is say, if the version- Reboot all the servers. Yeah, reboot any time the memory pegs for just a microsecond. Just reboot the production systems, that, especially databases. Oh, yeah. If you can, re reboot Tom, your- Tom, I can hear him running in here to beat you senseless mm -hmm. now. Yeah. So if the name of this virtual machine is equal to bad- VM bad, um, then it, we're going to fire this, right? So then the actual, uh, uh, this is going to limit the objects that we're firing right. on. So the next thing is the actual trigger condition, right? So we're going to trigger on the virtual machine. In this case, I'm going to say, if the, hmm, you know, I don't see the one here. So let's do a quick search for memory. Search for mem. And we'll just do this by percentage, right? So if it comes sure. off. So we'll just go down here and say percent memory used right. on this node. And I'll say select is greater than. 90%, and then I'm going to set how long I want this condition to exist, right? So because if it, if it peaks for a minute, you know, that's cool, whatever. Um, and it's, you know, it shows me here on the trigger alert action it's the, with the little wave, uh, sine wave and the, right. the clock to tell me that that's what's going to trigger it. And you know what? I'm okay with this taking 30 minutes. Okay. Right? Because I've been watching this thing for weeks. I know that it takes it a while to go bad, and sometimes it magically collects garbage and it's all fine, right? But this is when fine. I manually have to go in and intervene. Right? So um, then I'm just going to say next. And then we're going to figure out what my reset condition is. Now, on this one, I don't want a reset condition. I want this thing to fire, to stop, and then um, make sure that I go in and manually reconcile it, right? Because it's still it restarted and I'd like to know. Or maybe I want to look at the number of counts of restarts for that, right? So I'm just going to say there's just no reset action. This can't be reset except by manual means. Um, is it? Uh, enabled all the time, well, maybe I want to specify like when I'm, uh, I don't know, asleep um, versus uh, not. So I can do that. So then the next thing, of course, is the trigger action. So what are we going to do based on that action? And this is where this gets a whole lot more powerful. Right. And in this case, a whole lot more stupid because we're rebooting the server. But it's okay. You do you. It's all. 
If you are not customizing the message that uh, you are sending as a part of that, you definitely should. We've done whole lab, lab episodes on that. Yes. Um, they start with clicking on the insert variable tool here to be able to pull those out for common ones. There are a ton of things that you can do. Customer Success Center has lots and lots of help on this. But I'm going to leave it default. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to side. I'm going to assign an action. Right. right. So I'm going to say add action because this is coming from a VM-based alert. Some of the actions that are going to come up here are based on VM. So instead of you have to pick from a very, very long list, especially if you have lots and lots of modules installed, it's going to go ahead and narrow those down for you. So in this case, oh, I don't know what we're going to reboot. That was what you said you wanted to do. I still think that's a terrible idea. It and, is. Yeah, and we're going to click Configure Action. Right. Now, if we we're talking about something like a container or a cloud resource or anything else, it would be really similar in that that list of actions would actually be kind yeah. of pre-curated to make it easy to find to pick the ones that are going to apply. Mm -hmm. Where these get a lot more interesting is if you look at something like uh, system configuration management, right? Okay. So in this case, this is data that's coming from server configuration monitor, right? So Correct. SCM, and I'm looking at uh, configuration changes, and it would probably be nice to get an alert if we drifted away from our baseline config on a server. Sure. Um, so if we look up here, oh. What's this? What's this HG Destiny machine? She may have beaten us to the punch. Yeah, it probably did. And you can bet it's going to be a security configuration. And there it is, right? So if I want to, this was an initial snapshot, right? So it's yeah. telling me that there was a change. But if I want to get an alert on that, well, what does that look like? We would go through the same steps that we saw last time, yes. only when you get to the alert section, it's going to look a little bit different. And probably the easiest way to get to this, because the alert action list is pretty long, mm -hmm. um, is just to use search, right? Comprehensive. So it's, it's, compre comprehensive. it's comprehensive, right? So I'm going to search for config here. And what do we see? <gasps> Server configuration differs from baseline. And the reason I pulled this one is that this one is sort of pre-configured. And you'll see some of these that are the sort of default out of the box alert, yeah. where you can only change so many things, especially where you know that config is like a diff value, so it's not sort of a regular polled value that you would use the regular right. property explorer for. So in this case, it's gonna it's gonna preset some of those, but then it's also gonna let me set the trigger actions. Mm -hmm. And of course, in this case, this one is you know basically just create a log message and send me an alert. Uh -huh. But you, being Leon, uh, definitely do not like to deal with too many alerts, or at least like to have a little bit more sophisticated escalation policy. I, I never want to have to do so, a human to do something that a computer could have done first. Yes, and you also have a great habit of naming things what they are, so they do what they say and they say what they do. <laughs> so if we take a look at your multi-step action alert here, we're going to start, of course, with the alert properties, how often uh, the condition needs to exist before it fires. And we'll just jump over here straight to trigger actions, because, because again, that's what happens when the alert fires. Right. And it doesn't really matter what the trigger is for the purpose of this argument, for the purpose of this conversation. And it's got multiple actions it does. And look what you've done here, right? <laughs> you've got one, two, three, four, four levels of escalation. So yeah. what are you trying to do here? Because you've, you've set wait times in between. So mm -hmm. what's happening? So the uh, first stage, immediately after the alert triggers and we see that it's really a problem, the first thing it's going to do is run this problem called restartserver.pl, because it's a Perl script, because of course I wrote it in Perl. Um, so it's going to try that. And let's say that that doesn't fix the problem. The problem, whatever it is, persists for another 10 minutes. The next thing it's going to do is a V motion. It's going to actually move that virtual machine over to another ESX host. Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't work, then the next thing it's going to do is it's going to actually uh, reboot the machine, because obviously moving it didn't work. Now, rebooting makes a little bit more sense. Right. And finally, if that doesn't solve it 10 minutes later, now we're going to call it the big one. Now we wake up the human at 2 o'clock in the morning, because only a human has the comprehension and understanding. Sev sev one or two ticket and open the ticket. Right. So basically what you did here was you took my uh, super simple example of let's just automatically reboot that. And you're actually using different actions that are available on that VM, right? Yes. So just kind of we're going to tickle it and see if we can get it to behave. We're going to restart the uh, process mm -hmm. within it. And then if that doesn't work, last case, we'll reboot it. And along the way, each one of those actions as it fires is going to leave a trail so that we can go back and audit later to figure out what steps actually remediated that um, to get it working again. Exactly.